So today I would be talking about F5. Before starting anything, just like to introduce myself. My name is Radhe Varma. I am a working professional and I have 16 plus years of experience. If you talk about my profile, I used to teach CCI Enterprise, Python, Data Center, Wireless, FILTM, GTM, ASM, and a lot of or other courses. Okay. Today we are here to learn about F5 terminology. So I would be teaching you F5 in today's demos class. I would try to give you such an overview that you, every one of you will come to the same page and uh, understand why F5 is there and why it is required. Okay. So let me tell you LTM stands for local traffic manager local traffic manager and f5 networks is a company name f5 networks is a company name there are n number of modules in the f5 like you said ltm here we have gtm we have asm we have apm we have arm and there are a lot of other modules which keep on working into the F5. In, uh, like these are the F5 modules which we can use as per our choice, how we need to use it, what are their functionalities, depending upon traffic to traffic, what is your requirement as per that you can use different, different modules. Thank you. So I was explaining about F5. F5, as I told you, F5 Networks is a company name like Cisco. Okay. Cisco has many products. Cisco iOS are different things. NexOS are different things. Meraki is different thing. Now SDN is coming on another things. Okay. So there are different, different products from one company. Bit like that, F5 Networks is a company where different, different, you know, I am just giving you the overview about LTM, GTM, ASM, APM, ARM. All of these are the modules. Let us, we will be focusing today for the FI LTM only. Okay. We will pick about the FI LTM. So FI, FI networks, LTM, a module, as I told you. Now let us consider a scenario. There are a couple of users. These users through the internet or maybe through any of the, uh, like, I will say either it is internet, SD WAN, MPLS, anything, lease line. They are connecting to the corporate company. And eventually, after the switch, probably there is a switch. Okay. And there is a switch. And then there, there is one server which is hosting a website. Any website, I am just taking abc.com. So the traffic will move from internet to the this is corporate environment okay to the router from the router there could be a firewall just to analyze that everything is fine or no there should not be any anomaly after that it will be going to go to the switch and after that it is reaching to the server everything is working fine let us say the traffic is getting increased number of users are getting now increased company won't two servers now instead of one server they want two servers or maybe they want three servers or maybe four servers when we have such a scenario first thing in this case if i will say abc.com in abc.com when someone is resolving it through the ms lookup i hope you guys are aware about it Okay, when you are doing abc.com uh, or any anything you are accessing over the internet through the get method, then eventually there is a DNS request will, which will get resolved and it will give you an IP address. Okay, so that IP address can be of the server directly. That IP address can be on the firewall and server is netted behind that. So what I was saying is, in the first scenario, I was taking the consideration that all the clients are going to the one server. 
and through this server the request is coming and the response was going currently there is nothing which was checking about a lot of stuff like asm module i was talking about one more module asm f5 asm module is there to check the violations with respect to http so if you are uh, multiple of the you know uh, applications are http or https based if you are having http or https based uh, you know uh, applications then you can have the asm module just to check the violations just to mitigate the violations like oops top 10 i don't know if you uh, people have heard about these kind of vulnerabilities but these are the major vulnerability the top vulnerability which is used uh, which will get exposed over the internet when we are using http or https application but that is not the case for today we would be talking about filtm and we will be sticking to that filtm now the scenario got changed i have again the number of some users are there okay these users are going over the internet through the internet they are coming to the corporate environment over here let us say there is a firewall this is internet router then there is a switch or let me tell there is f5 now after the f5 there is the lan okay either the switch or something is there and these servers are hosted all of these servers are providing the same application that is abc platform but the traffic flow got changed how now abc.com has the virtual ip over here this is known as virtual server virtual server virtual server so we are creating i am sorry i created on the firewall let me just remove from the firewall i was just showing you this part on the f5 we will be creating virtual so in our class when i am talking about f5 it means i am talking about the f5 ltm part so we are creating a virtual server here we are creating a pool in the pool all of these backends servers will be called as pool member so what is the benefit now if such thing appears what is the benefit let me tell what would be the benefit for such of things now every request will hit on f5 directly i am just removing all of the other entities there are n number of users they are hitting to the f5 and f5 will check which of my backend server i am just giving you point by point okay i will tell you about the point by point that what can be the possibilities so all of the possibilities i will try to take uh, into the consideration so all of the traffic is coming to the f5 the very first point which come into the picture is ssl offloading before telling me about ssl offloading you guys should be aware about two three terms the first term is full proxy so what is full proxy full proxy is if i have a client it is connected to the server and in between there is a router this will generate a request going to the request going to the server and response is coming from the server directly to the client this is one kind of you know communication whereas if in the same communication i introduce f5 of course there should be any router or something but there is f5 now if f5 is there or some full proxy device is there when client will send the request to the server it will get ended on the f5 and then f5 will initiate a, a request on the behalf of client again so there are two sessions one two similarly for the response 
the server will send response to the f5 and f5 will send response to the client now here if i will talk about f5 f5 is working as full proxy now and since it is a full proxy the very first use is ssl offloading what does that mean for ssl offloading i am telling you the second scenario now second thing you should be aware about what is ssl offloading you guys will able to understand second thing is ssl certificates every one of us are aware that when traffic is going through the internet okay when traffic is going through the internet this can be hacked by man in middle attack mim and anybody can see this kind of traffic like what you are sending from client to the server or server to the client it can be the very sensitive data if someone is hacking in between and able to open the packet then the authenticity of that particular traffic will fails down and the reason and the reason why we have an uh, solution that is ssl certificate what does ssl certificate do when client is sending a request to any of the website like abc.com it will take this request and send with the public key now the end entity if it is a server which receiving this request should have private key available to decrypt this data also when it will send the response it need to encrypt this data again with the private key and when it goes to the uh, client because it has the public key available the traffic can move from one place to the another place such thing is authenticated by ssl search there are lot of lot of cipher suits which are available using what these kind of encryption and decryption will be going to happen we will be going to talk about these cipher suits or cipher suites later on okay but today i am just letting you know that why ssl is important now you just think about one point see i am explaining about one you know client if there are thousand of the client and all requests are going to the server okay all of these requests are coming to the server and its server responsibility to decrypt and encrypt the data how much load is there on this particular body for decryption and encryption to avoid though that kind of load what i was sorry what i was explaining about i was explaining about that if some client is sending the wait for a minute maybe client is little bit okay this is f5 this is server now i was talking about if n number of requests are coming now f5 is a full proxy it will stop that packet will do that encryption and decryption because in f5 we will import that private key how to import that private key again i will explain you about all of this stuff in the class how to generate the keys how to generate the csr how to generate the certificate very important things for your environment very important things for your interview i will be going to explain you what you need to do what you need not to do what is intermediate certificate what is root certificate if you miss them what will be going to happen i will be going to talk about those things later on in the class because today is the demo i cannot uh, 
explain each and everything. But encryption and decryption is done by whom? F5. So any client side encryption decryption done by F5. When F5 will send that request to the server, it will be a plain text. Now, since both of these things, both of these things are residing into your data center, within your data center, MIM, man in middle attack, very rare chances that it will happen within your data center. So it is secure. And such kind of thing is known as SSL offload. Any doubt so far, please ask. Otherwise, I will proceed further. No doubt? Sure. Let me now explain some more usage of the F5. Let us say these traffics are coming. over the internet and there are a couple of the servers. There is no F5 currently. Huh? There are a couple of server and somehow we are sending the request onto the server one by one through the round robin or something, some load balancing mechanism we are using. If such is the case, one and two, Everything is good. The request is going, response is coming. Everything is good. Everything is fine. Whereas after some time, server two is down. Now, some client will report that yes, I can go through the one. Those who are going to the one, they are say that, okay, I am okay. I am having the, you know, uh, everything available. But those who are going to the server two, they will report application is down. If you want to introduce such kind of intelligence onto your device, F5 has something known as monitor, health monitors. What does health monitor do? Now let us consider the same scenario using F5. If we have a couple of the, again, some of the clients, these clients going to the internet, over the internet, they are going to the F5 now. After the F5, there are some servers. I'm just considering two server. It can be two more than two, depends. Let us say now F5 will proactively, proactively monitor these servers by sending some of the probes and checking some of the results. Again, if I will talk about monitors, even the monitors have different, different type. It can be a simple monitor of ICMP. It can be some scripted monitor. You can use some kind of script. It can be some TCP based health monitor. It can be some HTTP based health monitor that you are sending a GET request and checking the response that either the response is good or no. And depending upon your health monitor, it will be able to check, F5 will be able to check the health of pool members. See what a good advantage it has. If this is down, F5 will not send any of the request on the down node or down pool member. It has the visibility what my pool member is up and running fine. And on the base of that visibility, it is acting so far. Just I'm, you know, uh, telling you a couple of more things. Since it is full proxy, F5 is full proxy. You have the client, you have the servers. And when traffic from client is coming, client is migrated on IPv6, but server still on IPv4. So when you are creating a VIP or virtual server on the F5, you can make it as 
IPv6. In the backend, you can create it as IPv4. By using such kind of scenario, from client to F5, your first communication is IPv6. From F5 to the backend servers, it is IPv4. The second communication is IPv4, it is IPv6. And all this possible because on the F5, you are using full proxy. Okay. Fourth, if your traffic, let us say, uh, let me just tell in the form, you have a couple of the clients. Okay. One client, I'm just picking up one client and considering there is no F5. And there are two servers. This client is opening Amazon, maybe, or .in. This particular stuff went to the server one. Response come over here, client is happy. Wanted to buy something, maybe iPhone. Add it to the card. Okay, and then goes for the payment. When it goes to the payment, again the request will generate it. Somehow that request to the go to the server two. Server two will say, "Buddy, who are you? I don't know. Please authenticate yourself." This client will say, "What is happening?" Before some time I logged in, it is asking for the logging again. Why? Such thing is known as persistence these things require the persistence people are also aware about sticky session sticky session so the session should be sticky so in f5 we can use the same scenario okay let me press control z let me just scroll it up same scenario if i am considering using the f5 so if if one thing is coming there is F5, F5 has couple of the servers, again, the same scenario, couple of the servers are there. One of the server is selected. Let us say this comes, this comes to the server one. F5 has the persistence available. And for some time, if it is source based, maybe again, persistence is uh, of several types, source based, cookies based, different, different things. Okay, let us say it is source based. If it is source based, by default, the time would be 180 second. So for 180 second, 180 second means three minutes, right? So for three minutes, your client, if coming again and again for this kind of transaction, it will not go on any of other server. That is known as persistence. Again, there are a lot of usage for the uh, using F5, but I cannot complete each and everything on this class. Let me talk about a couple of the things about our lab, okay? Because lab is very important. If someone of you is not aware about this terminology, this technology, and you want to learn it, then for sure, you need to do a lot of practical thing. And for providing you the practical stuff, we have this lab available. If you see, we have three of the servers available. Okay, you just need to uh, right click, put on the start, and it will get started. Here, if you see, you guys need to make this lab by your own. This is the uh, like complimentary. It will be given to you. No extra cost. Cost is involved in the code. Okay, so these are the server zone. This is your L3. This is your two F5 because later on we need to do the practical on the partitions. Even I will talk about the partitions. What are the partitions? What are the root domain? I would be going to talk about that. I will be going to talk about HA. What is HA? What is traffic group? How traffic group is useful for us? Why HA should be there? What are the good practice for the HA? What are the things which we should be avoided when we are creating the HA? We should be aware about these fundamentals. And I would be going to cover all of those things as well. Okay. 
then not only this maybe later on you will be able to understand what is i rule i rule is some kind of scripting that we are using on the f5 that is nothing but on your tcl language okay tool command line language already embedded into it and using i rule you can modify the default behavior of your f5 device that we will be going to do i will be going to explain about you ltp also local traffic policies these things usually people don't tell okay so i would be going to tell you about all of this stuff because i am a working professional so i have uh, you know working experience on these things so when i will teach these parts you will be able to relate into your environment again taking so much interviews from the past a decade now 10 years approximately so would be able to tell you what all are the interview questions coming back to the lab this is your management pc or this is the user pc also so i would be doing each and every uh, thing through this user if you will go to the asm then we can uh, we have asm another lab but obvious we will be exposing the attacks from that particular pc how to expose that attack maybe i would be uh, telling you in next demo when there is asm demo uh, in some time in maybe some days okay so let us talk about over here this is a pc which is connected to the internet there is l3 switch which has the connectivity with your f5 f5 if you see there are four ports there are four ports why these four ports are there f5 has by default four ports it can be three also depending upon the requirement to requirement depending upon the uh, your environment so let me just explain about these four ports first one port is for external traffic the traffic which is coming from the pc side generally your virtual server is also on the same ip the ip pool would be same for the external then one port is towards your servers towards your server zone this port is known as internal internal means carrying the internal traffic external external traffic internal internal traffic then rest two ports rest two ports are for your ha high availability one port and the last port is for your mg mt management okay so in this lab if you see there are four ports what are these four ports let me explain again for external for internal for ha for management so i would be going to explain about these labs don't worry we have the workbook also for the initial uh, users that how to bring up this lab okay in the first time what is licensing what is provisioning all of thing we will be doing what you need to do is double click over here just take the console and like this pc is coming if i will make it bigger here you go okay and through this pc i will be i can take the uh, web console of my fi device this is my fi device 101010151 is the ip which i configured you can configure it as per your choice admin netminion and you can see this is my f5 device this f5 device is so this is your f5 device which is showing to you okay now this is saying that this f5 device does not have any license license is seized perfectly fine we need to do the trial keys we have some trial keys like this is the trial key let me show you how to licensing the device i am clicking on activate now this base registration keys come from where if you want to ask this question i am going to the new tab maybe you can search on the google write down blog netminion okay netminion blogging website will open for you guys open this if you just scroll it down okay maybe it is the first uh, it is the first which is coming licensing and provisioning you guys can see licensing and provisioning workbook is there there are uh, different workbooks also available but not every workbook is available for the you know uh, all of the users 
but here i am providing the thing that how this uh, like registration key can be retrieved but don't worry who are registering with us i will be performing this lab again from the starting and i will gonna explain each and every fact about this lab that how you need to bring up this lab how you will get the lab access each and everything i will gonna explain over there but yes those uh, who wanted to see this you can just click over here and you can just download this pdf okay as an pdf you can get it those who are interested maybe you can go to the blogging site and you can uh, go there uh, there are a lot of other uh, very useful blogs available maybe you can please search for that so i am putting that key and clicking on the manual way that i don't want to automatic uh, generate this particular uh, license and clicking on the next when i am saying next it will create a file name as dozier again i will be going to explain about this dozier file in detail later on today we have a limited time clicking on the licensing server it will go to a license server it is asking for the dozier copying and pasting the same file clicking on the next it will say accept the eula and user legal agreement i am saying that okay i am accepting it i have no choice then it will give me one license this is the license here you go i can download it or maybe i can control a control c copy it and just paste it into my license box click on the next and this device will uh, take some time okay to do the licensing and licensing part would be done so that is how you are doing the licensing again licensing provisioning these are very important task and if you are working as an architect it's your job to tell that okay which device should be there f5 has multiple of the devices like it can be a virtual appliance like in our lab it is a virtual appliance it can be a physical appliance it can be have the vpn chassis kind of stuff so depending upon the traffic flow depending upon how much you uh, you have your application to be onboarded and you need to have the capability assessment for sure okay and depending upon those things you need to be select for your f5 device and you need to start onboarding your application don't worry i would be gonna go explain these glimpses to you guys who are enrolling for the class every one of you will get this kind of stuff okay currently it is showing offline why because couple of the demands are starting if i will show you root net minion and okay tail minus f where log lpm you can see there are couple of demands processes maybe okay these processes are getting started and due to because you are licensing right away so you can see that there are lot of you know processes are starting in the background after some time this device will become online and why it is showing stand alone every one of us should be aware about it the reason being this is a single device currently we have two devices available into our if you see our lab we have two devices available but we need to create the ha for getting it active and standby scenario okay let me just stop this and if you see it it is online now if you see this particular field local traffic under local traffic there is virtual server can you see this virtual server let me just delete everything from here just i will show you from the scratch let me go to the pools there should be some of the pools available okay maybe let me delete those pools which are not called anywhere those who are called maybe we cannot delete them okay two are the reference it's all right leave that okay. go to the nodes so there are these three things which are important nodes are nothing but the server the back end server these are the server ips okay if i will show you these are the three servers somehow my third server is okay it is not showing green because of health monitor 
we will be going to talk about why health monitor is important on the node level or no if it is yes if it is no why and just for your uh, like knowledge sake it is never never uh, should be on the node level why maybe we, we will going to explain uh, in the classes then if i will go to the pool and if i will hit the button create here what i am saying i am saying that i am creating a pool of pool members you can give any name today's uh, march 27 i am saying march 27 pool okay any health monitor maybe i will be going to explain about health monitor later on load balancing there are lot of load balancing either it is static either it is a dynamic either it is priority group activation lot of things are there i will be going to explain about all of these things in the classes but currently i am just showing you a glimpse that okay if i am taking server 1 uh, probably for the port 80 adding it server 2 again for the port 80 just taking the two servers only so i have a pool now which have two members which have two pool members this is server 1 and server 2 i can create a virtual server on to this virtual server i need to give two or three details like name again maybe name i can give march 27 virtual server okay source ip i don't want any source ip taking 10 10 20 before updating it going to the command prompt just pinging this ip ping 10 10 20 80 and let me put continuous ping you can see currently this ip is not anywhere and the reason why this ip is not responding if i will open my incognito window and i will check 10 10 20 80 and put enter it should not lead anywhere and the reason why because i didn't create anything with this ip okay and the results is in front of you guys okay let me just close it ping is there you can see rto is coming out i am creating this virtual server for port 80 going down all of these profiles i would be going to talk about in very very detailed don't worry in the classes very important stuff these are okay currently just i am uh, not leaving uh, not uh, not talking about this part also what is snat what what kind of you know behavior it has how the traffic will flow using the snat without the snat we will be going to cover with lot of lot of practicals okay i will be going to cover remember the persistence i was talking about this is the persistence so what i put i put the username sorry i put the uh, name of the virtual server i put what what is my virtual server ip what is my port and then i select the pool the same pool what i created before some time once i will click on finish you guys would able to see that here the reply should be you know here you go you can see the reply is now coming and if i will access this particular virtual server now from my incognito window probably again 10 10 2080 one of the backend server is responding to me it is saying yes uh, it is the response is coming from server 1 any doubt so far any question from anyone yeah so <clears throat> one question from my side mm -hmm. uh regarding this uh, lab in moment uh, do you provide any kind of url or uh, we need to create it on locally on our machine lab environment is cloud based 24 by 7 accessible you will get it by uh, your uh, like whenever you enroll for it you will get how you need to uh, you know go to the lab environment how you need to make the uh, things done for yourself workbook will also get it uh, get allocated to you take any name it's not only the you know uh, ltm if you will talk about maybe sgvan let me just give you the glimpse about the sgvan also i'm just showing you uh, how these uh, labs are working not only for uh, this particular uh, stuff ltm but asm uh, maybe sgvan maybe python whatever you want whatever you want we have the labs available for each and every environment you can see that there is a lab for the sdman now can you see it yeah yeah 
So once I enroll, uh, for how many days uh, I would be having access for these labs? See that you can talk um, with me later on, or maybe with Zoya. Okay, uh, you will able to understand what is the model. Don't worry. But it will be during your whole course and after some days. Okay. And uh, one more thing uh, regarding certification. Do you help in certification also? Okay. So let me tell you whatever certification knowledge is required. Yes, we do help. But if you are looking for dumps, uh, then maybe I need to say no. Okay. We don't provide dumps. Okay. Thanks. Sure, sure. So that is how, what is our model? Okay. Before wrapping it up, let me tell you, if you want to check what all flavors again is there and how you can check that, you go to netminion.net. Okay. And there are a lot of other courses, even the CCI security, CCI enterprise, whatever you want to learn, there is. Go to the FIU LTM because you, are, you guys are going for the FIU LTM. If you just scroll it down, there is download now button. Okay, click over here and you will get every uh, topics in detail over there. Not limited to that uh, traffic. We have a lot of other things which will be get included during these classes. Okay, that is one thing. Secondly, if you need to uh, like uh, contact with us, again, if you are going over here, you can see that you can just click on this WhatsApp button, click on this online button, and you will be you know in touch with us. Again, Joya is there, myself is there. You can ping us anytime, okay? Then whatever we are teaching, whatever we are teaching, that will be get recorded, including this demo session. Everything you will get on the videos portal. Videos portal of NetMinion. That you can access over the laptop or maybe on any of the screen, right? Plus Android application plus Apple, Apple OS. Okay. You can just have these videos available as per your choice. 24 by 7 again available you can see as per your ease okay so you will get lab you will get online training you will get recording and you will get workbooks two hours saturday two hours sunday four hours per week approximately approximately 24 hours plus or maybe something plus minus two hours. Okay. Bit like that. Depends upon the syllabus, how it is getting completed. Not we are in the rush to uh, complete it within the time frame, but it should be get completed as per the syllabus. 